Okay, today I'm going to talk about why VCs are so fixated on unicorns. And I've talked a little bit about this in my writings before, but I wanted to try something different and try spelling this out in a video where I'm going to do a little bit of basic math. So let's, let's just, um, you know, let's just say that we're investors and we've got a portfolio. Okay, and so we've got, let's just call it 10 companies for simplicity. Company one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. And, you know, the old adage says that nine out of ten early stage companies fail. And so let's say that in this scenario of our portfolio, we put in, let's say, a hundred thousand dollars. $100,000 into each one, uh, 100K into each of these equally. So we've allocated a total of $1 million. Okay. So that's our fund, a million dollar fund. We've put 100K into each one and nine out of 10 fail. So they all go to zero or near zero. Now you may be wondering, well, I'm actually a great picker. Nine out of 10 companies in my portfolio would never go to zero. But I think it's really important to factor in other things. Even if a company is incredibly successful, you as an investor still may not make any money. I think in yesterday's news, it was announced that Giphy is being purchased by Facebook for something like $400 million, which may sound like a lot of money, but this morning I read a tweet thread from an angel investor who put in a small amount of money in the very early stages and he actually doesn't expect to get any money back or get very little money back. So even though this may actually be a big outcome or relatively big outcome, you may still not see any dollars. So you should basically assume that nine out of these 10 are gonna go to zero in some form or fashion, even if the company itself is successful, you will not see money. All right, so we've got one winner. In this one winner, let's just say that this one winner 10x is our money. So you take a 100K investment and turns it into a million dollars. And for that company to 10x and have that type of outcome, that is pretty life changing for most founders. Now, let's take a look at our portfolio. For you as an investor, well, we started out with a million bucks that we put into these 10 companies. And our one winner is basically making us whole again. In other words, this portfolio is not making any money. Moreover, because VCs often have fees, whether it's management fees or legal fees, operations, fund administration fees, they're just a bunch of fees. This may even be less than one X as an entire portfolio. So this is where there's a bit of a disconnect because for the founder, this founder is ecstatic because this is a great outcome for him or her. But for you as the investor, that outcome is not a good outcome. All right, so let's say that this founder, instead of 10Xing our money, let's say that they 20X our money. And so instead of 1 million, we're actually getting 2 million now out of it. So, okay, this is a profitable fund. Uh, it may be just, it may be shy of 2x, certainly, a 2x portfolio, because we have to pay for all those fees, but it's a profitable fund. But when you think about it against other comps, this is not that great, even though it's a profitable fund, because startups take a long time to grow, they take a long time to exit, and when all is said and done, if you compare yourself, your portfolio against, let's say, index fund results in the public stock markets, which you can pull your money out at any point in time, and also is roughly on the same time scale, index funds tend to do 2x over 10 years. We're getting less than 2x for roughly the same amount of time. So this is in a scenario where the founder is basically 20xing investment dollars, but your portfolio is still not doing that well, even though, even though it's a profitable fund. So, okay, so what does this outcome actually need to be for us to be really happy with this portfolio? Well, if we, if we start thinking about other numbers, like let's say that this one company returns 50X, 
50x means that what we're talking about here is five, returning 5 million. We put in 100K and we're now getting 5 million back on that one company. And so it's a 5x gross fund, right? We put in a million, we're now getting 5 million. But then after fees, it's going to look a lot closer to, to 4 million. In addition, we're not even factoring in dilution. And very often, companies, even if, you know, from entry point to exit point, sound like they have an incredible multiple. An investor will get diluted down 20% every subsequent round. So when you actually do the math and you, and you follow this all the way through, what we actually really need to happen here is we need something like a $10 million outcome for this one company, which would be 100x gross. And then after factoring in dilution, which is typically about 50% dilution between entry point and exit point for early stage, and after factoring in fees, in the end, this comes out to basically a 4x net fund, roughly speaking. So Forex net fund in venture capital is considered excellent. Most VCs don't hit a Forex fund. I would say the vast majority of VCs are hitting a 1X fund or less. But I think even those that are profitable hover closer to the 2X mark. Um, so the very exceptional are doing 3X, 4X, or even higher. And kind of like startups, VCs are very much a power law game as well. The very best VCs can deliver... 50x, 200x on the entire portfolio, not just one company. So what does this really illustrate here? Well, it illustrates a few things. The first thing is VCs, you know, obviously have no control over what happens in the company. But the way you make money is from entry point to exit, right? It's simply, what are you entering in at? What valuation are you entering in at? And what is the exit. Well, you can't really control the exit. You can't control what acquirers want to buy, but and for how much. But you can control when you get in. So if you just sort of follow this math, if we're looking for 100x in our winners, and let's say that, you know, around here in Silicon Valley, like YC companies typically go for a 10 mil cap uh, post money valuation, then you are definitely looking for over a billion dollar exit in order for this math to work. Now, of course, if you're getting in under this, then the exits can be much smaller. So, you know, if we follow this train of thought, like we get in a 3 million cap, then all of a sudden for the same equivalent, we could get the math to work if it's a $300 million exit in our winners. So that's thought number one. Entry points and exit points do matter. Thought number two. Well, uh, VC is very hard. As you can see, it's very challenging to make this work. And actually, it is not even about the number of failures. So the second point is that the number of failures doesn't actually matter. And this is interesting because in most industries, you know, you want to be basically... Uh, get things right 90% of the time. In VC, you don't care about that. The one time you do get it right, you want it to be very right. And imagine your surgeon telling you that as you're going into the operating room. Oh, I've botched up nine out of 10 surgeries, but I hope that your one goes well. You would not accept that. But in VC, as you can see here from the numbers, it, it really doesn't matter. And you can play with the numbers yourself. Like if you can let's say save this company and save that company and those outcomes are less and this one's less as well, is it better or worse to have three smaller exits than the 100x or one exit at 100x plus? And as you play with it, you'll notice that actually what matters is the very few winners that you have, maybe it's the one winner you have, how big is that winner? So it's all about big winners and okay if just one. So that's the second lesson learned here. And I think this is important for everybody to understand whether you're a, a budding investor or whether you're an entrepreneur, this is the mentality that everybody should have because this is exactly what is going to happen and you need to really understand the mechanics of that and prepare for that. I think on the flip side, I hear a lot of angels saying, 
well, maybe I will sell early and get 2x or 3x in a secondary on something that's winning. And you don't want to do that either. For something that's working, you want it to ri you you want to let it ride because you need the things that are working to potentially get you to 100x. So so that's that's actually a very interesting thing and I really encourage everybody whether you're an investor or an entrepreneur to play with the numbers there. All right, so what's the third lesson learned here? Well, I think the third lesson learned here is that, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a numbers game and we have 10 portfolio companies here. And when you apply adages such as, you know, nine out of 10 companies fail. And even if you're better, like, okay, maybe you can get, you know, 60% of your portfolio company to fail and four of them to work out. Like we said, it's all about number two, but it still is a probability game. If you only have 10 companies, even if you are very good at picking, it's a little bit dicey to, to really hope that you do have a winner in here on just 10 companies. And so you need, you need enough of a portfolio, like you need a, enough companies to, to make this work out because, you know, I think statistically speaking, you can get closer to, um, you know, whatever the averages are, like the larger the sample size that you have. Now, of course, with a smaller portfolio, which may have, um, you know, a, a lot more uh, variability in here, depending on sort of the size of your sample set. In this case, it's 10. It could go really well or it could go really not well. Right. If you end up with miraculously two big winners that are 100x, then this will go phenomenally well. But if you're just playing the probability games that one out of 10 companies is, is a winner, when you only have 10 companies, it's it's very tricky to necessarily assume that you have that winner in, in 10 companies. So you want to have um, what I would call like a big enough portfolio. Now, there are many investors who have different schools of thought on this one. There are certainly all the accelerators and uh, micro funds who also believe in larger portfolio theory, where you may want to have a lot of companies to increase your odds of having a big winner that will yield 100x. Now, of course, the flip side to that is then you also have many more companies in your portfolio who may, quote, dilute your winnings. So that's sort of the trade-off there. On the flip side, though, if you don't have enough portfolio companies, like you only have five, then it's very challenging to know if that will work. So I'll just leave it loosely as you need to have a big enough portfolio. Everyone has different schools of thought on how big enough big enough is. I think if you are a new angel investor and you've never invested before, I would encourage you to invest in more companies than fewer. So, you know, and by that, I mean, I would even say 50 plus co's. Um, if you have been investing, of course, for a while, then maybe it doesn't even really matter because you have great experience and you think you can pick well. So that's a bit on portfolio theory of startups and, and the three learnings from this.